go in if you want to come to those. I do, yes. <laughs> <laughs> because Stephen Hawking was just ahead of me at Cambridge. I, I can remember him quite well, though right, I didn't know him. And I was rather amused that when the Times interviewed him and asked him about religion, he said, religion is a fairy story for people afraid of the dark. And I was asked to comment, so I said, atheism is a fairy story for people afraid of the light. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> it's very kind of you to clap, but that proves nothing. <laughs> Because That's a great line. One, 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 one of the things you learn in the world that I work, and it's very important, is that a statement by a scientist is not necessarily a statement of science. Amen. Now, what amazes me about Hawking, who's a genius, obviously, is the heart of his book with Leonard Mladenov, The Grand Design. The key statement is this. <coughs> Because there is a law of gravity, the universe can and will create itself from nothing. What? <laughs> because there is a law of gravity, because there is something, the universe can and will create itself from nothing. That's a flat contradiction. Secondly, because there is a law of gravity, he doesn't even say that gravity exists, but what would a law of gravity mean if there's no gravity? Worse still, the universe can and will create itself. If I say to you, X creates Y, roughly speaking, if you've got X, you'll get Y. If I say X creates X, well, if you've got X, you'll get X. And what does that mean? It means that nonsense remains nonsense even if scientists are writing it. Mm. <laughs> so I was staggered that this is the key argument of his book. I would suggest that nobody with an undergraduate education in philosophy read that book before he published it. Huh. Because what he's reduced the whole thing to, and it's ironic, it's God or nothing now. Either God creates the universe or nothing does. And um, <clears throat> he gets into complications in the definition of nothing. But I was very fortunate in having a debate with Alan Guth, the father of modern cosmology at the MIT Harvard Faculty Club. And I said to him in this very friendly debate, I said, Alan, people are very confused about nothing out there. <laughs> so I said, look, you can help us. When you, as an astrophysicist, talk about nothing, you do not mean nothing right. in the philosophical sense of absence of anything. He said, no, we don't. Okay. I said, thank you very much. Uh, right. Exactly right. So the point is that these people are claiming to get a universe from nothing, but they're failing to do it. And the most amusing of all, I must tell you this, I, how would you like this if it was submitted to you? Lawrence Krauss, astrophysicist, because something is physical, nothing must be physical, especially if you define it as the absence of something. I mean, that is utter absurdity, and it's on about page four of his book. Now, the point is, and Bill is the world expert on this, so I'll stop now, that the standard model of the universe leads you with a start from nothing. And they're having a great problem to get a universe from nothing, so they redefine nothing. As a Christian, I don't believe the universe came from nothing. I believe it came from God, but God is not physical. Amen. You're going awfully fast, Dr. Lennox, for lawyers and Pittsburgh Steelers fans. Shall I say it again? <laughs> yeah.